Hi, everyone. I'm Shilpa Luande. I uh, run engineering for Vertica. Thank you for coming today. Uh, we are all at the Hadoop Summit, so I don't need to tell you a lot about big data, about the big data problem. Uh, we all know how challenging problems are associated with big data. We also know how important it is that we solve them uh, in scalable fashion. You've heard a lot about, uh, from the talks, talks uh, during this conference, about how it is important to use the right tool for the right job uh, when it comes to creating solutions for big data. In the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to add one more tool to your tool chest, and that is going to be the Vertica Analytic Database, the Vertica Analytic Platform. Uh, how many of you attended the talks by Twitter, uh, specifically the one yesterday evening that talked about Vertica and Hadoop? Great. Uh, how many of you are, have, are familiar or have used Vertica before? OK, a few. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a little bit uh, with an introduction of Vertica, uh, just for people who aren't familiar with it. And then most of this talk is going to be focused on use cases where uh, you would use Vertica, or you would use Hadoop, or you would use the two together. Uh, and I have a bunch of customer use cases that I'll be talking about. So um, just to get, put, you, put it in perspective, uh, a significant number of Vertica's customers actually are also Hadoop customers. Uh, people use the two systems together to solve very interesting problems. When is it that they use Vertica? Uh, they use Vertica when they need interactive response times for the analytics. So when you want to actually do ad hoc analysis uh, on large amounts of data, you use Vertica. Uh, use Hadoop when you need batch uh, type of analysis. So let's talk about what Vertica is. Uh, at the very core of it, Vertica is a database. It's a SQL database. Um, you can use it like any other database. You can access it using SQL, ODBC, JDBC, Tableau, MicroStrategy, Business Objects, whatever tool you like to use. Under the hood, Vertica is completely different from any other database. Vertica has been designed from ground up to just do analytics. You will not use Vertica for transaction processing to run your storefront or anything like that. You would only use it when you need analytic type of workloads. So what is it that Vertica makes Vertica different? First of all, as I mentioned, it's a completely different architecture under the covers. Uh, we use what is called a columnar storage architecture and have a columnar engine. This is something that we've built from, uh, from scratch. And what that gives us is it gives us hundreds to thousands of times better performance compared to your traditional databases, you know, the oracles, the teradatas, and so on. So that's one thing. The second is that Vertica is designed to run on just industry standard x86 Linux-based hardware. So uh, you don't need fancy hardware to run Vertica. You can just run it on you know, the same type of hardware that you might run uh, Hadoop on, uh, probably slightly different configurations. On top of this really fast engine, uh, we've then built a whole bunch of analytic capabilities. We have several SQL extensions that we've developed. Uh, we've developed uh, ability to write programmatically extend the SQL language with user-defined uh, extensions, and so on. Another interesting thing that we did when we designed Vertica, remember, we designed it from scratch, so we had all the freedom in the world to do whatever we wanted. We made sure that it's extremely easy to use. Um, you can get a Vertica cluster up and running in a couple of minutes. You would be up and running with data uh, in a matter of an hour, um, and, and so on. We also made it easy to scale out as you go. So Vertica runs on a clustered architecture, similar to Hadoop. Uh, you can add nodes as you go, and then Vertica will automatically rebalance the data as you, add, uh, as you add the nodes. You can also shrink the cluster if you want. So all those things put together give you this very, very uh, different experience when you're talking about databases. I know everybody here, uh, a lot of Hadoop enthusiasts think that databases cannot scale, they don't do analytics at all, and so on. But Vertica is quite different from the traditional database. Uh, and what, we, what all of these changes do is that it gives you speed of analytics, gives you extremely simple uh, ways to do things, uh, and it gives you ability to scale. So Vertica has many customers uh, who have been, uh, hold on a second, has many customers who have deployed Vertica uh, in petabyte configurations. So let me talk a little bit about the types of uh, SQL analytics that you can do with Vertica. Uh, clearly, you can do all of SQL, the traditional SQL, the aggregates, the analytics, the window functions, and all that type of stuff that you can do with anybody else. But more interestingly, we've extended Vertica with a lot of uh, 
analytics that we've heard from our customers as they started using the product. Specifically, we've done things like time series analytics. There is a SQL command you can use in Vertica to do sessionization of logs. Uh, you can do uh, time series gap filling and interpolation uh, for a non-uniform uniform time series. Uh, we have pattern matching that allows you to, for example, figure out patterns in a marketing funnel, things like that. Things that we found people do over and over again, uh, we just extended SQL language to do some of these analytics. And I can probably spend an entire hour just talking about that feature set. Uh, we also have the ability to do scalable social graph type analytics, which many of our customers do. On top of the standard SQL, we've extended, uh, we, provided, we provide a couple of SDKs uh, that allow you to extend the SQL language with your custom code. Uh, currently, we support C++, so you can write uh, your own aggregate analytic, um, what we call transform functions uh, in C++. With Vertica 6 that we released a couple of weeks ago, you can also use R, uh, the statistical tool, to write your code and then use that to uh, extend the SQL language. So who are the people who use uh, Vertica? So we have a significant uh, number of customers in different verticals, about over 600 of them at this point. Uh, the most, uh, I would say, uh, well-known probably here is Zynga, who runs all of their analytics on, on the Vertica database. It's a multi-petabyte installation running on several hundred nodes. Um, and they actually just every click in every game uh, that people play on Facebook essentially ends up in a Vertica database eventually. Uh, and they run uh, fairly uh, sophisticated analytics, as I mentioned, social graphing uh, on Vertica itself in SQL. Uh, we also have other customers. Uh, Guest Jeans is another uh, customer who's done interesting things. They do mo the more traditional uh, point of sale data warehouse. They just they replace their existing system uh, uh, with Vertica and are able to, because of Vertica's speed and performance, are able to give um, their store managers an iPad app where they can interactively um, go through their, their data warehouse and make decisions of their own. So coming back to Hadoop, so why are we here? So why is Vertica at the Hadoop conference? The reason for that is, as I mentioned, Vertica is uh, very complementary to Hadoop in a number of ways. As I said, number of Vertica's customers are also people who use Hadoop very extensively. So let's talk about what is similar and what is different about the two systems. So both of these are designed from ground up for analytics. They're both scalable analytic platforms. Both of them have come at the problem in two different ways. So Hadoop is often used when you have a long running analysis and where it is very likely that because of the, a long time the analysis runs, you're going to experience failures. And so there's a lot of things that are done in Hadoop to to account for that and to make sure you don't lose hours of work because a machine failed. Vertica, on the other hand, is designed for when you need really, really fast response times to your queries. So Vertica queries run in seconds. Um, and so if something fails in the middle of a query that runs for a second or a couple of seconds, you just retry the query. You don't have to worry about you know, logging and checkpointing and all of that. So they're meant for different types of, uh, of use cases in the sense. Uh, clearly, Vertica's interface is SQL, and not everything is expressible in SQL, and Hadoop's interface primarily is MapReduce. Obviously, Vertica has extended its interface with programmatic APIs, just like MapReduce. Uh, you can have Pig and Hive and other declarative paradigms on top of, uh, of Hadoop. So primarily, the, the main uh, use case difference is this interactive versus batch type of analysis. So what I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes is talk about what, how Vertica and Hadoop can be put together. What are the capabilities that Vertica provides that allow you to very seamlessly talk to Hadoop and then be able to use the two systems together? Uh, you did hear a, a real life example of this in, in, in Bill's talk, uh, the Twitter talk yesterday uh, evening, uh, if you were present. I highly recommend listening to the recording of that talk if you weren't there. Uh, so what we've done in, with Vertica is that, especially with Vertica 6 that we released a couple of weeks ago, uh, We've separated out the Vertica engine from the Vertica storage. So that means a couple of things. You can basically now run, uh, you can of course run, run Vertica SQL. You can run BI tools that access Vertica SQL. You can run it against data that is stored inside Vertica. We provide a connector. We've always had a connector that connects between Vertica and Hadoop using MapReduce. So we provide input output formats for uh, Vertica, so which means that uh, output of a MapReduce job could load data into Vertica, or the data pulled from Vertica could be used as an input to a MapReduce job, uh, and so on. 
What is more interesting with Vertica 6 that we've done is that you can now use Vertica SQL to talk to files that are directly in HDFS using external tables. So that means you can do things like uh, you can join data that is stored in the database with a table that is in an external table over, uh, over Hadoop uh, and be able to do more interesting things with it. And uh, we also have the ability to what we call do user-defined loads. So if you had a data format that, that we didn't support out of the box, you can write plugins uh, to our native loader that allows you to essentially um, load any type of file from any type of data source. Uh, and um, we are starting to put together connectors for various of the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, starting with HDFS. So let me talk about a couple of use cases that have been uh, in use so far, uh, that we have seen so far in our customer base. The first and the most common use case, and probably the most obvious, is to use Hadoop as an ETL tool. Uh, so essentially, any type of log parsing, um, you know, making unstructured log or semi-structured logs into relational tuples, that is the most common use case uh, that we see in our customers. The second use case that we see is to use HDFS just, as, just for storage, and then use Vertica and Hadoop for analysis on that data. Um, again, you would use, uh, you might, may or may not use Hadoop as an ETL tool in that case, but again, HDFS is the primary storage platform, so all the data comes into HDFS first, and from there it might go into Vertica or Hadoop. I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a few new ways to access this data in this use case. Uh, you, you can, of course, do Vertica for uh, the real-time use cases. You can use uh, Hadoop for the batch use cases. And then you can use Vertica SQL to talk to uh, the data that is directly stored in HDFS with Vertica 6. And then the least common use case that we see, but we do see this, uh, is that Hadoop is used not for its MapReduce capabilities, but for some other things that it has. So it's used for... Uh, it's scheduling load balancing capabilities. So all the data is stored in Vertica, but you just use Hadoop jobs to pull the data and do interesting things with it. Uh, use Hadoop to convert to data formats for use by other tools. Uh, we see people using some uh, esoteric uh, uh, tools, and they need certain data formats as inputs, and they use Hadoop to convert the data into those formats. Uh, we also see some people using Hadoop uh, as a backup uh, HDFS or Hadoop as a backup mechanism. So they just use Scoop to pull data out of the database and use it and back it up in, uh, in the Hadoop file system. And next, I'm going to talk about a few use cases uh, that we actually see from our customer base. Uh, these are real life production customers of ours. Uh, I think there are a number of other customers who are actually attending uh, the, uh, the summit, and so you might run into them. So let me talk about the first one. So Novartis. Um, Everybody's heard of them. Uh, they, do, they do drugs uh, for um, diseases like cancer and other Alzheimer's, other things. The problem that they are trying to solve here is that uh, in a number of uh, situations, there is a single uh, gene difference, single letter difference in a gene that indicates propensity to have a certain disease. So Alzheimer's, for example, there's a single letter in a single protein uh, that, is, uh, that is found in certain part of the body that indicates that you have at a higher risk to develop Alzheimer's later in life. And so these, are, these types of differences are targets for drug discovery. And this is a big data problem because out of like tens of thousands of such possible differences you might find, one of them might lead to a real drug that is developed eventually. So a lot of analysis gets done or a lot of data that is collected. So what Novartis in this case does is that it uses Hadoop to, do, uh, to find the, the actual differences between a reference genome and the, 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 the uh, data that they have from various people who have these diseases and so on to figure out what are the genetic differences between the reference genome and, and, and these people. And then they, use, they put all of that data, they the pre-process the data in Hadoop and then they put that data into Vertica. And then across this large number of, uh, of, of customer samples that they have, these data samples, they do more structured type of analysis. They do SQL-based analysis to figure out which are the ones that they could potentially apply as targets for oncology or some other uh, medical uh, drug discovery type purposes. Number of other tools get used along the way. Um, Novartis is a very early adopter of the R uh, SDK that I mentioned Vertica has with Vertica 6. Uh, they use Spotfire for visualizations and so on. Uh, the, the big difference to them from having built this, this platform that combined Vertica and Hadoop was 
the analysis that previously for them took took hours in a day, uh, which means you could only do five or six of these in a in a day, now finishes in minutes. So now you can imagine that many of these experiments uh, that they could only do a handful in a day, they could now do just many many more uh, of them in a day, and so that means essentially faster uh, discovery. It speeds up the drug discovery process. Compete is another uh, example of a customer. They have a database of uh, 2 million subscribers or more who uh, have chosen to opt in into their system where they provide them access to their clickstream logs. Uh, and from there, Compete can analyze those logs and figure out uh, insights, uh, essentially marketing uh, insights that they can provide as additional marketing data to their customers. So again, this is a, this is a very interesting um, a problem. It's basically, it has inputs, which is uh, stream structured, unstructured logs, which are clickstream data from people. Um, and end customers of Compete would like to be able to slice and dice this data in an interactive fashion. So what Compete does here is that they use HDFS to store all of this raw behavioral uh, data from their end users who opt in. And then they use Hadoop and MapReduce to try to figure out out of this data set where the conversions are, who are the people who actually clicked on a certain ad based on you know, what type of ad was shown to them and what they clicked and, and across all of their, uh, their behaviors. And uh, then they put that data into Vertica through a custom ETL tool. They just wrote their own Python-based ETL process to pull some of this data, put it into Vertica. And then Vertica is the one that powers all of their end user facing uh, dashboards and, and, and reporting tools where people can then take this processed, uh, what they call the high value business um, data that then uh, serves their end customers. So again, this is an example of a system, very low administrative overhead for them, um, gets much better response time to their end customers, uh, and it all runs on, uh, on just commodity uh, hardware. Uh, Everyone, this is a very interesting uh, uh, use case. So one of the things that we often hear about you know, big data is that, well, people are getting tracked more and more. Is this all about big brother uh, type of a situation? And Evidon is actually uh, somebody who's taking a contrarian approach to that. They actually make this browser plugin called Ghostry, which you can try and download yourself. And it'll tell you about who is tracking you on the web. So if you just have this in your plugin, you can, you can try that. They take that to one step further. And what they do is that they provide, if you opt in into their system, you can provide information about who's tracking you back to Evidon. And they will then use this information to help their end customers get better transparency. So they will know who's, so if, if you are an advertiser, you can actually have a little icon on your ad that if the user clicks, they will, they will know exactly what information was used about you to give you that ad. So that's a very interesting um, twist into the, into the advertising space, right? So, uh, so you feel more comfortable about what information is being collected about you, and the advertiser feels like they are giving their users more transparency. And another use case that they, they have developed as a side effect of this is that they can figure out, if, if you have a website with a lot of third party tags, they can figure out which of those are actually contributing to your website performance in a negative way. So if there are third party tags that are slowing down your website or below the fold ads that are slowing down your website, they can pinpoint that to you. And that is another service that they can offer to their uh, end customers. So the, this whole infrastructure, they run on AWS, Amazon Web Services. And so uh, they, use, they collect all of the data from the users who opt in into, uh, via Edge servers into HDFS. Uh, they use Hadoop primarily as an ETL tool. They, uh, they uh, pull out useful information out of uh, the logs that they collect. And they put, they put that data into Vertica, and Vertica is the uh, system they use to analyze the, the metrics around performance of all these third-party tags on these websites. Uh, we actually have a number of customers running on Amazon um, uh, on AWS, um, and uh, we've had, uh, we had that since about 2007 when AWS first came out. We were the first database to offer a service on, uh, on AWS, and it's not a significant um, uh, number of customers, but we do have production customers who successfully deploy uh, their, their analytic capabilities on, uh, on, on Amazon. And the last uh, use case that I'd like to talk about is, uh, uh, is visible measures. Uh, they basically have a two-pronged uh, product. They provide analytics on all the videos that are visible, that are viewed uh, over the entire web. Uh, 
through YouTube and many other, uh, many other sites. What Visible Measures has been able to do is that they can, uh, through their, te their technology, uh, be able to track uh, not just the, the views of the videos, but also every interaction that the user does on the video, like when you fast forward through Rewind, what, how much time you spend on every piece of the video, whether you forwarded it to a friend, and so on. So all of that type of analysis they've collected, uh, they collect about um, those videos, and then they can provide that information to their end customers as, uh, to help them, help them. Uh, if you're an advertiser or you're a publisher of videos, you can get analytics about the, that, that media that you put out there. Uh, they also have an advertising um, offering that allows the, uh, the same video to be promoted as, uh, as, as content uh, for, at premium publishing sites. So the interesting thing about this use case is that they not only use Hadoop and Vertica, so very similarly in the, uh, to the previous use cases where they have Hadoop for, uh, for the batch processing, the ETL type of, of work. They use Vertica for their interactive dashboards. Uh, but they also use a key value store in addition to all of this. Um, and they use the key value store to do uh, what, what we would call as the serving needs, so where you have to serve um, information about a specific user profile to an advertiser something of that nature where you're looking up um, uh, pieces of information associated with a video or, uh, or a user base, uh, you use a key value store. So it's another example of how you basically build out uh, an analytics architecture and infrastructure using um, the right tool for the right job. Right? So, um, and again, this is another of these uh, petabyte scale Hadoop plus Vertica infrastructures that we have uh, in production. So with that, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to stop. And I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, Vertica's community uh, edition. So we have a community edition of our, uh, of our database that you can try for free. You can download it. It's uh, up to three terabytes and uh, 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 up to one terabyte and can run on three nodes. We also have on GitHub uh, a repository of extensions that have been built by various people uh, that you can use to uh, uh, extensions that have been built on top of uh, our SDKs, and you're welcome to try any of these. Um, the connector I mentioned before that Vertica has, the MapReduce connector, uh, we are also in the process of open sourcing that. It'll also be available on GitHub. So if you have, uh, if you use it and you extend it in interesting ways and solve uh, interesting problems with it, uh, you're welcome to contribute them back to the, uh, to the Hadoop community. So you can use it uh, along with um, along with Vertica or uh, otherwise. With that, I will pause and ask for questions. Uh, please come to the mic if you have any questions. No questions. Great, thank you. Oh, you have okay. questions. So um, uh, you mentioned um, that Vertica can read from external tables on Hadoop. Yes. So uh, what about the storage format uh, of those tables? Uh, does it have to be some specific storage format? So, uh, so that's a great question. The external tables operates on top of what we call our user-defined load API. So the user-defined load API in Vertica allows you to plug in pretty much any data format you want. Uh, any source um, of data and any compression library or filtering mechanism that you want. So those are the three components of our native loader. Uh, you can do an external table on, on top of this um, user-defined load, so which means that you can essentially use any data format you want as long as you can write a plugin. Uh, out of the box, obviously, we support a certain number of formats, and we will ourselves develop plugins for a certain number of formats, but it's, it's supposed to be an open API. Uh, you can use it for, uh, for anything um, you want. And we love to have these plugins contributed back to our GitHub extensions repository. Hi there, Mike from Disney. Hi. So you described Vertica as a columnar store that's distributed and persistent. It sounds a lot like Bigtable. Would you say that it's a, uh, it's a Bigtable implementation or is it something different? How would you describe it? So uh, a number of the ideas in Bigtable actually are, uh, I would say, Vertica has parallels to a number of ideas in Bigtable. Uh, so clearly, we, the, the, the main difference is that we've used, that, we've used some of those ideas, but we've also used the, the ideas from you know, distributed parallel databases uh, that we know about. You know? So when you know that 
if you're doing joins, uh, there are certain techniques that you use to make sure that joins operate efficiently and so on. So, uh, so we've used all a number of ideas from previous distributed systems implementations and previous distributed database implementations. We've combined all of those with the speed and uh, performance of a column store engine architecture. Um, and that's what Burdika does. Can I ask one more? Yeah. So have you, have you had any customers who have been using other big table implementations like Cassandra or HBase that have switched to Vertica? Uh, yes, actually we do have some that have. Um, uh, I can't name this customer, but it was, uh, it's an ad customer who got acquired by Google, uh, uh, funnily enough, that uh, started out using Vertica, a combination of Cassandra and Vertica to do the analytics. They use, you know, and then they eventually realized that they, they could move more and more of the processing into Vertica and then they switched completely from Cassandra to Vertica. So I do have some examples of that. Thank you. Uh, but fundamentally, I think there is, a, again, as I said, right tool for the right job. Cassandra, HBase, key value store use cases, those are great as platforms for you to serve data uh, when you're looking up by a certain value, like you want to serve a user profile, you want to serve me all the messages that were uh, done by a particular user or something of that nature. If you want to do you know, more complex analytics, you want to find all the distinct visitors to your website, or you want to find time series, uh, look at, sessionize your data, or uh, find what are the, you know, uh, find a pattern of a specific occurrences. You can't do that with, with HBase or Cassandra very easily. You'd have to write a lot of code to do that. So that's where you would use something like Vertica. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so my question is that are there any limitations in the R interface for Vertica? Like, because can I use a Vertica installation as a distributed installation for R? Uh, yes, we are underneath the covers will do that. So essentially what you do is that you write your program in R uh, and you, uh, you register that program as a function depending on what kind of function it is, whether it's an aggregate or a, or a general purpose transform function. You register that with Vertica and then when you issue that, ver that, that particular function, uh, Vertica will parallelize it based on how you issued it. So uh, you can say, you know, run this uh, page rank is a great example. You want to run the page rank function. Uh, on, uh, on, on the cluster uh, and you, partition, you want to partition, partition it by, say, uh, every, every, you want to run it on people in every, uh, every geographical region or something like that. So you can issue that as a SQL query. And Vertica will invoke R um, on every, every node to run the page rank and computation uh, on the node. So essentially what that does is that you can run that computation on much larger data sets than you can do with a single copy of R because that you only have to, you can only do stuff that fits in memory. So with this, you can just run that computation on a, in a distributed data parallel manner. So is there any functionality which can run on a single node installation of R, but will not run on this Vertica based installation? You can installation? run Vertica on a single node if you want. You can run Vertica on a single okay. node. You can run R by itself. Uh, you can also run R. You can talk from R. You can talk to Vertica using just R ODBC, just using the standard format. So the SDK allows you to basically do more than that, uh, more than what you can just do with the standard interface to R. Okay. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is Girish. I'm an independent consultant. And uh, from one of my previous clients at the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, where uh, we had this large uh, claims data warehouse in DB2, and then uh, for end user ana analytics, we started using Vertica. Uh, and Vertica was great in terms of you know blazing performance and everything, but uh, we could never get rid of the existing DB2 64 node, you know humongous data warehouse because um, all of the ETL work that we had in data stage was utilizing, uh, you know, some features like, say, the stored procedures in DB2 or, um, you know, common table expressions and things like that. Uh, so uh, any thoughts on, you know, um, how, you know, large enterprise clients might be able to, you know, kind of make that transition from some existing, you know, relational database, data warehouse, data marts, uh, to, to, to Vertica? Uh, yes, so there are several parts to that question. One is, do we have all the features uh, that any established database has? Uh, we have quite a few features uh, that we do. We don't do stored procedures, for instance. Part of it is by design, uh, because we believe that if you use stored procedures in analytic context, you're probably not doing the right thing. But, uh, and a lot of times these can be replaced, uh, or they, are, they, they were done to account for shortcomings of performance for, uh, for the existing database. So there's obviously, uh, at, when there is opportunity to rethink an architecture, we uh, advise our customers to do that. 
but we also realized that those databases have been around for 30 some years, and so they have had a lot more time to just write code, right? So, uh, so we do release our software uh, pretty much every year. So we have a major release every year, and we have a minor release in between, and so um, we evolve pretty rapidly uh, compared to the traditional database vendors, and so. Some of the features that you might have missed when you first tried Vertica, they might be available now, and so on. Uh, but our general philosophy also is to not be necessarily a complete replacement. We don't believe in the rip and replace type model. Uh, if there is something that you do in the existing system that works well, then leave it there. Don't break it. Uh, but use Vertica for where you have real pain, where you really need the, the real time capabilities of Vertica. So you know, use Vertica when you're, you're not getting your reports done in time, when, you're, when you want to load more data but your system can't handle it, you want to load data continuously throughout the day, all of these types of use cases and when you would um, use Vertica, oftentimes as an add-on to your existing database. All right. Yeah, thanks a lot. Hi. I'm over here. Oh. Okay. Um, you mentioned that we can run some analytics job off of Hadoop directly using some app Hadoop's jobs. Uh, I was wondering what were the key differentiators when it comes to deciding uh, if we want to run our analytics jobs off of Hadoop directly with a MapReduce job or um, if we're going to want to use Vertica to do that. And I think you've mentioned some differences in terms of performance and also reliability, failover. Um, what I'm interested in here is what are the key differentiators in terms of the functional key differentiators in terms of the type of processing we do and also the type of data that we're using. Um. Okay. So, uh, so what I'm, as I mentioned before, you would use, you typically use Hadoop when your computation is, 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 is long running and uh, it, is, it is procedural in nature. You can't really express it in SQL uh, as easily. There is a large overlap in the use cases. Where you might be able to do things in, uh, in, in Vertica uh, that, that you could also do in Hadoop. Uh, and again, that is a matter of your choice, which, which system you, uh, you pick to do those things. Uh, but really, I would say use, use Hadoop uh, when you really have long-running batch type of, uh, of analysis where you're going to put several hours of work into the, uh, into the analysis and you don't want that to, to die in the middle of it. Right? But use Vertica when you really need to reduce the latency of, of the data, uh, of when the data is available and when you use, or you want to reduce the, 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 the runtime of the query. Yep, thank you. So I hear you say that um, I want to use Hadoop if I need to crunch more data or do more complex processing. Uh, Vertica is more aimed at quick questions, and Hadoop is for the big questions. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So things that you can, you can, you can. If you if you have business users who are using SQL, then use use Vertica. If there is uh, let me give you an example of something you would do in Hadoop but not in Vertica. Uh, let's say you want to analyze uh, your call logs from a customer service data center and pick out some interesting uh, sentiment out of audio logs. You would do that processing in, in, in Hadoop. You can take the sentiment out of that analysis and then put that in Vertica so that somebody who's then uh, looking for quick analysis and say, okay, I want to join my sales data with uh, my sentiment data from the audio logs, you could do that in Vertica, but extracting information out of the audio, video, things of that nature, like unstructured stuff, you would do in Hadoop. That's an example of where, where there is no overlap in the use cases. Yeah. Log processing, on the other hand, uh, you can probably do it in both. Okay. So, so we, we want to sort of pre-cleanse the data before we put it in Vertica. Uh, sorry, can so you repeat? We, we want to sort of pre-analyze or pre-cleanse the data before we put it in Vertica then. Yeah, so that's, a, that's one common use case is basically pre-analyze the data using Hadoop, put it into Vertica for uh, analysis. As a follow-up to that question about how do you compare you know, <clears throat> the low latency of HBase versus Vertica? Right, so, so HBase, the low latency of HBase. So HBase is used when you have a, a key value lookup uh, or a range type of analysis. So when you want that type of, a, that, is, that is your use case, then you would then you would not use Vertica. Vertica is not a key value store type of, a, uh, of an access pattern. But if you, have, if you want to find you know, a number of distinct users to your website, you want to do aggregations uh, and, and things of that nature, then you, would use, then you would use Vertica. Those are much harder to do with HBase. So as a, serving, as, a, as a data serving platform, you would use HBase or any other key value store, um, something that backs up your website in the, in the path of serving a data model to your user. Uh, but the analysis that feeds that model, you would do in Vertica. 
Hi. Um, I, it's on the same, same uh, topic. So is the, um, in terms of loading data into Vertica uh, versus keeping it in Hadoop and doing your, your analytics on Hadoop versus doing them in Vertica, is, is the cutoff there, like, is it still sort of aggregate in Hadoop and load, or is it just cleanse and just get the, the meat of the data, but still at a very granular level into Vertica, so that in Vertica you'd be doing your unique user counts over all various dimensions and, and that sort of thing, or, or, or am I still constrained of doing these big, gigantic, you know, 30-day unique user counts uh, in Hadoop? Um. Again, that's a matter of a, of a choice. You can do all of that in Vertica. So just to give you some examples, we, we, have, uh, we have customers who don't use Hadoop at all, <coughs> but have petabyte scale, um, big data analysis type of environments. Uh, very large telco uses us to collect data about all the devices on the network. Uh, this is a cable operator, so they have you know, all kinds of network devices sending SNMP information throughout the, uh, and so that's basically, you would think of this as, as hundreds of millions of devices on the network that are sending this data. All of that gets collected and, and loaded into Vertica directly. They keep every single detail record, um, and they don't pre-aggregate anything at all. And then they just use Vertica to do all of, the, all of the analysis that the end users need. So you could do that. Zynga is another example. Every single click of their, in, from their games goes directly into a Vertica database through a logging API. They don't go through Hadoop. Uh, so, but on the other hand, there are people who also use, uh, use Hadoop in the path. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Novartis, the reason they use Hadoop is that that is a computation they do. It, first of all, there, is, there are open source algorithms that they have available, but it's not also very easily access, uh, expressible in SQL. So that's what they use, they use Hadoop for. Log processing, where you have you know, uh, uh, click stream logs where most of these are very structured, so it's fairly easy to write a loader into Vertica directly if you want. Uh, but again, you can decide where where your boundary is in terms of wanting to use an open source system, wanting to use Hadoop, uh, wanting access to all of the data in SQL versus only some of the data. So it's a business decision, I think, a lot of times. So, so in terms of scale, like in terms of scale, tens of billions of rows per day or, or events is is within the yeah so scope. Uh, yeah, one of our customers is a financial services mm -hmm. customer. They have a 10 trillion row table in Vertica, which they've been loaded, loading over the past five some years okay. uh, at 50 billion records a day. So, okay, okay. And you can do that Answers throughout the question. day. Yeah. <laughs> More questions? Um, yeah, it's uh, Girish again. Um, so uh, I believe uh, with, with Vertica, right, while, while you're loading data, you could also be, um, you know, analyzing it and so on. Uh, so if you could maybe shed some light on, you know, how exactly uh, that might be going on and, uh, you know, what kind of isolation exists between loading and, and querying um, in, in the sense that, you know, how does, say, an end user analytics person know when, you know, some data has all been completed loading before they run the analytics and things like that? That's actually a great question. Uh, I didn't go into a lot of detail about how Vertica loads data. Uh, so another area where Vertica is quite different from other databases is that there is no post-processing of data after you load. Uh, we don't have indexes or pre-aggregations or materialized views or any of those things. So when you load the data in Vertica, as soon as the data commits, you can access it in queries. Um, so this is what we mean by you know, reducing the latency between the data coming in and you being able to access. Vertica has the notion of transactions, so if you haven't committed the data, your queries won't see it, but as soon as you commit the data, your queries can see it. Uh, we also have the notion of time travel, so you can basically say, only give me the data as of a certain point in time, and we can do that as well, so. Does that answer your question? Yes. Uh, question, uh, can Vertica plus R be used for predict modeling, like for m more longer term projects? Uh, you can run uh, pretty much data mining algorithms, you know, k-means, clustering, page rank, uh, different types of algorithms like that uh, that are available in R. You can run it in Vertica. Uh, again, you know, the, the use cases when you would want to run it in, in, in Vertica is that uh, you, you, so Vertica is, has fault tolerance built into it, but not like we, we don't restart jobs as, 
if part of the job fails. We don't do that type of fault tolerance that Hadoop does. So it, again, depends on what the, uh, uh, what the runtime of the job is and what you expect to see happening. Uh, if a node dies during, uh, uh, while a query is running in Vertica, subsequent queries can keep running, but, um, but the, the current transaction will roll back just like in any other database. I think I'm out of time, but well, thank you. We'll be at the Vertica booth, so feel free to come by if you have more questions or want to know more about the internals.